Okay, I think we're ready to get started and the recording has started. Uh, so I'll pass it over to you both. Well, thank you, Sangeeta, for helping to organize this information session. So I will start with the history of African descent in BC 12, which is a course offered here in Vancouver. I think before though we get into that, there's a land acknowledgement. <laughs> I just saw it pop up. So if you want to go ahead and go to that slide. Um, so we, of course, um, acknowledge that we are on the traditional unceded territories of the, of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil tooth peoples. And I will add that for myself as an uninvited guest on these lands, as a Lakota person who's, who my traditional lands are also occupied by settlers, I appreciate that this place and the beauty of this place can never be expressed adequately in English, that it is a language that is not of this land. And so the, the Hokaminam language is best suits the environment and the natural beauty that we see around us. So that's how I remember um, my place here. So thank you. So we are presenting this evening myself as, as the previous course instructor for African descent and Trevor who is uh, will be taking on the queer history course. So as Sangeeta is uh, loading up all of the, the information for this course, it's a really exciting time to, to be here, to be an educator, to be able to expand our exploration uh, of, of history beyond um, the, the history that has been approved for us. And so this course emerged out of a, a, I think a desire from community to have a, a more Afrocentric view of history. So the course focuses on a, a wide time range um, from the African empires to Africville, which is an, a much more a Canadian context. And having taught this course, it's really amazing to watch young people gain an awareness of the civilizations that existed on the continent of Africa long before there were I mean, recognized civilizations in other places around the world that much of our our education system actually has its roots in the continent. They are amazed to learn that the very first university in the world uh, emerged in Timbuktu, Mali, West Africa in the 1200s. Uh, so also going from the Caribbean to the Caribana, from Hogan's Alley to the Six, I mean, there's, there's so much to be covered in the course and the course instructor can narrow that focus and, and take feedback from students about where their interest lies. So this course and its model is the first of its kind, and it's responding to the need to diversify our curriculum and to have student choice at the, as the driving force. Next slide. And I'll turn it over to Trevor. Oh, actually, Sangeet, if we don't mind going back, uh, we did have a student join Sicily, who was going to share a bit about her um, experience in the course. Yep, we have some time just kind of in a few minutes for Cicely. Okay. okay, great. We'll go ahead with Trevor then. I thought Trevor was with you. No, he's at his own location. I don't see him on. So how about if we go just through African descent and then we can come back to queer and trans history. Okay.
some of the areas that the course covers, as I mentioned before, is African empires and indigenous peoples in the Caribbean, migration patterns and bastions of black Canadian communities. Um, something that's really exciting is the, the, there is the BC Black History Society that has a, a tremendous resource, a website that uh, we've been using for the course for some time. And students are really engaged in the process of learning about who some of the early um, black figures were in British Columbia and the contributions made to the to the wider society. They, the Black History Society has recently been able to publish through a grant the the content in the website. So it's become a text for the class, which is uh, which is great to have something in their hands so they can see a timeline of again some of those early um, black pioneers to BC. So if you are interested in learning about how Black people from BC contributed and advanced their community and society as a whole, this is a course for you. Uh, if you are convinced that all Black Canadians are in Eastern Canada, <laughs> you're about to be proven wrong. Uh, if you're searching for a course that is flexible in its delivery and timing and is student-centered and student-designed, uh, that's the, the wisdom of having this course off of the timetable because it allows students from across the district to collaborate, friends from different schools can finally have a course together. And it allows for more field trips and more experiential activities around the city. And we're always hoping to do fun projects, listen to guest speakers and really engage in community. So it is a, a different model, I think, of, uh, of delivering a course. So hopefully if, you, if those interest you, then BC African Descent History 12 is for you. So would uh, I see Trevor's on the call. Do you, Trevor, do you want to do a little bit of an intro for the course now? Hi, absolutely. Thanks. Um, yeah, so the, the Queer and Trans History of BC 12 course is really about uh, celebrating and uplifting uh, two SLGBTQIA plus um, uh, community members and contributors to uh, all of society, anywhere from local queeros to trans trailblazers. Um, you'll see we've got a little uh, still from Comortal's WYD or What You Doing uh, video that they put out a, a couple of years back. Um, they're actually slated to be one of the guest speakers this year. Um, and uh, there is a section on the power of speech and language. Um, there's also uh, a look at gender expression in arts and fashion. So um, as I mentioned, Comortal is one of our guest speakers, but there are uh, other guest speakers um, around critical literacy, using your voice for positive change um, and others. And then uh, of course, this course is modeled off the BC African Descent History 12. Um, model and is designed to uplift in uh, queer and trans voices and perspectives from across the ages. So I'll I'll just speak a little bit. Uh, there's a few people from uh, around the district that are um, supporting the courses kind of in the background. Uh, myself, my name is Sangita Calder. I'm uh, the principal at Prince of Wales. Also on the call today is Rob Morrow, who's the principal at Bantech, and Hugh Pham Fraser, who is one of our district principals in um, our it, it has a very nice acronym, but I mean, essentially, she's working on uh, equity within the district. So the reason why these courses are offered as um, course district courses is to provide equity and access to unique curriculums to all students. These courses are important. We're, we're here kind of, uh, again, us, we're supporting the background. Jelena and Trevor have um, graciously been uh, the course instructors and, and helping lead students through this, this important work. Uh, so there is some information just so you're aware kind of the logistics of it. Uh, so it is, again, a course that's offered all across the district. It will be hosted in a central school location. We're just ironing ironing out those details. So we'll give that information to kids, students who are, are looking to, to register. But it is 
uh, offered a little differently than your regular courses because um, uh, it is a district course, so it's hybrid. So it's going to be uh, a variety of um, asynchronous and synchronous learning, which means sometimes you're going to have class. Sometimes you might have readings or meetings on teams. Um, so those meeting dates will be ironed out with the students, uh, whoever joins, you know, based on their availability. Uh, this course, both courses are, are full year linear courses, so they'll be running from September to June and they are a course, so they will be on your learning update. Uh, and like any courses, it will, sorry, any linear courses, it will be reported on four times a year and you'll get a final mark in June. So we will give you an opportunity to ask questions in a little bit. Uh, but uh, we just wanted to kind of share those overarching details and just know that the district really supports this course, these both these courses, and we want to make sure that the experience is offered to everyone across the district. Um, so I am going to pass it back to Trevor to talk just a little bit more in detail about um, the new course queer and trans history of bc and then i think we'll invite cicely who's one of the uh previous students of african descent to to talk about her experience in the course if that's okay with everyone i'll pass it back to trevor sure. thanks angita um so a couple of areas of study that will be included in the course are the kind of the legal history and background of 2slgbtqiap plus uh, identities in canada and bc um, looking at different conceptions of gender identities around the world, um, a, a, as well as a, a direct focus on intersectional lenses. So looking at how feminism and 2SLGBTQIAP plus rights and liberation uh, intersect, as well as disability justice and racial justice. Um, so not just looking at um, single identity um, ideas, um, look at looking at critiques of representation through the ages. I've had a lot of fun um, Kind of going through uh, the <laughs> the archives uh, of uh, media, local media, and uh, provincial media, um, finding stories on um, queer and trans uh, uh, events or um, people, and seeing how they're represented, um, and helping folks kind of understand how media has misrepresented in a lot of ways. Um, those elements um and then finally looking at local place-based learning um we've got a couple of tours um in the works as well so um visiting uh different uh places that are related to queer and trans history in in some ways and then i maybe oh yeah and then if you are an ally or a member of the queer trans community want to learn about more about the roles and places 2SLGBTQIAP plus folks have in BC. Um, if you're searching for a course that is uh, flexible in its delivery um, and timing that is student-centered and student-designed, um, if you're looking to meet and work with um, other folks from across the district and like to do, again, fun and unique projects, listen to guest speakers and engage with, with our communities, um, then this course is for you. We do have Sasha Mark, who's a Cree Métis comedian, um, also uh, confirmed as a guest speaker as well. So I'm um, looking forward to having them, them uh, share their wisdom. So at this time, uh, we do have Cicely on the call. Um, Cicely, if you can unmute, I hope you can. Yes, hi. Hi, I am Cicely. Um, I'm happy to speak a little bit about this course. Yeah, um, so this course has really been impactful for not only students of color like me, but also students that are white or you know, non marginalized students to learn about the present history of or the present of like what's going on in the black community um, and also within the world, but also the history of it and how that has led to what's going on now. Um, some of the highlight projects that have really made an impact in every student's life that has taken this course from what I've seen has been the colonization project um, around different exploitation around Africa, how that has been going on for like hundreds of years and how it continues to go on um, just with 
different materials like car batteries and things like that that are being mined out of Africa. Um, and then it also gave us a really informational idea around systematic injustices in the Black community and how that takes place in the Canadian government and around the world. So that was really great to hear about. Um, and it kind of gave everyone the tools to be able to see this in their everyday life and the tools to know how to fight against that, in a sense, um, and to inform everyone else. So yeah. Cicely, can you add maybe a little bit from a student perspective, the, the benefits of having course off the timetable? That might be something that um, young young people are curious about. If they've not had a course outside of the timetable, what is the, the benefits of that? Absolutely. So uh, a lot of people uh, would wonder why someone would want to take a class outside of school. Um, this isn't your typical math class or anything like this um it really it doesn't feel like you're taking a class like you're doing extra work um but again like it does allow you to connect with students with different perspectives from around the district um and someone that you probably would have not met if you didn't take that course off times table off timetables um and then also again i'm saying this for a perspective of someone who goes to Vantech and where the course is actually taught. Uh, but for someone who is going to a different school and coming to Vantech, it would really allow them to meet new teachers and uh, other people. So yeah. And just, um, just from my perspective as an old lady learner, um, we I, I got to participate in part of um you know different seminars or field trips with African descent and it is you 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 I have a my my feeling was it felt more like a university course so it's just you know you have a lot of freedom of what you're learning um it's a very unique curriculum and um you know I shared this with students as well like it, it does give that kind of university course feel more of like a seminar class. And uh, just to clarify for, for folks on the call, um, African Descent has been running as a district course for uh, next year will be its third year and Queer and Trans History uh, 12. This is its first year that it's running. So um, this will be its inaugural year. So hopefully next year at this information session, we'll have students to speak to, to that, their experience in that course. Yeah, one other thing, um, sorry to interrupt, but okay. as Ms. Calder said, it does give that university feeling and it's nice um, because again, you're not being forced to take this class at all, but it also allows students to not only have these learning opportunities in a classroom, you're able to take the information and kind of learn outside of class time, which is something that has been really valuable. That's a great point. Thanks for sharing that, Cicely. Um, just again, some more details about the course in terms of uh, credits. It is a, a high school course that you will receive four credits. Um, both courses are considered a uh, senior elective in social studies um, that universities would consider for admission. However, it doesn't fulfill the social studies uh, 11 and 12 graduation requirement at the moment, but Jelena is working hard with uh, folks with uh, kind of the the ministry to make these recognized as grad requirements, but that will hopefully happen in the next couple of years. Um, but please double check with uh, post-secondary institutions for admission requirements, how this course is, is, um, is considered for admission requirements. But again, uh, it is a four credit uh, course and it would be considered an elective. And just, if this is for you uh, to register for the course, um, because 
we are registering students all over the district. Uh, what we're doing is just gathering information of who's interested and collecting that information via uh, a, a Microsoft form. And then once we have those numbers, um, we'll contact you and your counselors directly in how to enroll. There are a couple um, unknowns right now because uh, African descent has run at kind of a central location of Van Tech, uh, but that might be moving um, next year. So there'll be some more details given to students that are interested. But again, uh, we're looking at uh, hosting these courses in a central high school location for that in-person session. And then, uh, of course, on teams and uh, there'll be field trips and stuff like that. So more information to come, but you know, it is important to us that these courses are running in a central location that all students across the district can access. So to register for the course, make sure that your counselor knows and complete that form by May 29th. Um, again, ask a friend to join with you. Um, these courses really thrive when there's a number of students in it. And the last couple of years, they have been running between like 20 to 30 students. So it's it's a really interesting, a lot of interesting conversations. And sorry, I need to correct myself. This is the third year that African descent is, is running. So I think we're opening it up for questions. Um, that folks might have. Uh, so the questions, would you mind mentioning what the Socials 1112 graduation requirement is? So all students need to take either a Socials 11 or 12 uh, to graduate. So some of those courses that fulfill that requirement are like Law 12, um, World 20th World History 12, um, courses like uh, that. Um, but African descent and BC queer and trans history 12 would be considered electives. And you have to do one of um, you have to do one socials 11 or 12 to graduate a four credit course. And again, go over that information with your counselor to make sure you you're fulfilling your grad requirements. Um, great question. Are there other questions that folks? might have or have. Okay. So the question, a student was concerned that a three hour class after school would be such a long time after seeing a full day. What would a class look like? Will there be breaks? I'll pass that on to either Jelena or Trevor. <laughs> um, I think that would be against a human rights code to <laughs> work all day and then have another three hour class. I don't think the instructor would want to do that either. Um, the way that we we have run the course uh, in the past three years has um, it just happened to be on a Wednesday because that worked well for most of the students, and we would run from four to five thirty, and that would be the in person on a weekly basis. And then the um, activity on Teams would take place when it works well for your schedule. So definitely, <laughs> we're not going three hours hardcore. And, and again, it is that kind of seminar feeling it feels like community like if folks need to, to take a break in between it's it's very flexible but we're generally going from four to five thirty and uh the field studies or enrichment opportunities that that students have if they fall outside those days uh students are aware and um they know what's happening and where where to meet and and stuff like that so sometimes those might be a little bit longer because they might be Depending on what they're doing, they might be taking it like a workshop or or something like that. But students are aware and they actually help build the curriculum and the activity within within the courses. Um, do we know the day of the week for the in-person queer and trans history course? Trevor, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, I believe we're doing Monday after school. Yeah. Okay. And then some other questions. Any exams? How academically intense are these courses? I, I don't know. Um, Cicely, do you want to talk about your experience as a student with African descent? Yes, I'm happy to. Um, in terms of like how it feels to have another class after school as well, it really doesn't feel like you're 
there and you're being forced to be there and stuff like it it is a great learning opportunity to be able to do that and actually have a fun class where you're able to learn um sorry what was the question could you just reiterate once again yeah so like how are there any exams and how academically mm -hmm. intense are these courses yes so i didn't have any exams um again like it is framed as an elective um however these classes are very informational and you're not quizzed on your knowledge or anything like that you're able to collaborate with your fellow students or your friends um in order to kind of understand it it's more of a comprehensive thing um and and you're and you're, you were doing a lot of projects, right? Yes. Yeah, we were doing a lot of projects and group projects as well. So it's not, again, something that you're quizzed on, but it is something that you kind of show your work and you show your understanding of what you've learned. And you kind of all come together as a class and collaborate on what you've learned. So in terms of it having that stressful class academic feeling, that wasn't there for me or any of the other students that I had um, with me at that time. Like it didn't feel like I was being forced to be there. It was, it felt more fun and like an elective. So yeah. And just a lot of like absorbing learning and applying it to and showcasing your learning in different ways. Exactly. Like projects it's a lot of, yeah. and discussions. Yeah. There's a lot of group discussions um, and just a lot of, I think, listening and you know, if there's a presentation, you're paying attention to the presentation. If we're watching a movie or some kind of documentary to do with the subject, um, it's a lot of just paying attention and trying to understand it for yourself. But it's not, it's definitely not something that is super intense. It's something that I think everyone is able to do. Um, and you just show your abilities. And then, um, Trevor, do you want to speak to kind of the vision for queer and trans kind of in terms of exams and academic intensity? Yeah, absolutely. I can also confirm that there will be no exams, uh, <laughs> but uh, definitely kind of a project based and, and conference and, and discussion based uh, type of learning. Um, I do have several field trips already kind of in the in the works as well. So um again that kind of as um Cicely mentioned about the idea of um kind of uh learning through listening and experiencing things and then also talking through them so yeah um and then the other question do you know where uh queer and trans history will be meeting a central school was mentioned i think um trevor if you want to uh, chime in if I'm incorrect, but we're just um, in the process of verifying the location. So once students are um, express their interest, we'll have those conversations. We should have it confirmed by the end of the month. We're just working with uh, the district folk on on kind of the logistics, the staffing, and and all that kind of stuff. That's uh, not as exciting as as the course, but so more to come. OK, looking at the chat again. Um, if you are interested, if you follow that link or that QR code for the form, uh, it takes you to a Microsoft form where students sign in with their VSB email and just uh, complete a few uh, important questions and um, including an email address that you check often because that's how we communicate with with folks. And again, uh, on this form, you choose which course you're interested in. Again, there's two district courses, History of African Descent and Queer and Trans History of BC 12 that are being offered this year. If you're interested in both courses, that's also something that you can choose to take. Um, so the, so do we have the numbers to run queer and trans history? What's the minimum? So again, um, Hugh and Rob are also on the call. Uh, we're kind of, uh, the administrators that are helping connect the district, uh, to these courses. 
And uh, there's a commitment by the district to run these courses. So they haven't given us a minimum, but already we have a good uh, 15 plus for both courses. So both courses are running next year. There is a commitment by the district to, to run these courses because they're important for our students. I don't know if Hugh or Rob want to add anything to that. No, hi, good evening. This is Rob Morrill. Um, just to add, yes, we have the numbers to run the courses. However, um, the more students that take the course, the richer the dialogue, the richer the conversation. So um, if you're sitting on the fence, please do, uh, do enroll and um, you're going to add a lot to the course by being there. Thanks. And then Hugh, sorry, I know that you were going to say something as well yeah no i i'm actually glad thank you rob for saying that because i wanted to i just want to echo what he said as well um the equity and anti-oppression team is really committed to the work and the learning that comes with this and so i would really encourage you um think about being part of this community and this learning. And this is also a great way to also know what's happening around the district in terms of the work that the district is doing. So you get that access as well. Um, so there's lots of benefits from, from these two courses. Thanks. And yeah, and just to add to Hugh's point too, there is some spinoff um, with being a part of these courses. There's some uh, student leadership opportunities as well within the district. Uh, a number of students involved with history of African descent were part of the, the district-wide student um, uh, equity and inclusion conference. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's some spinoff additive uh, uh, things that happen with uh, with being a participant in this course. And uh, again, I guess Cicely can speak to this too, being able to meet with like-minded youth across the district, I think is really powerful for our students as well, so. Yeah, I'm actually happy to speak to that one. Sorry. Um, Go for it. Honestly, it's it's nice to have not only a class full of people who are minorities who are trying to learn about this to benefit themselves and you know understand themselves but it's nice to see an effort from um, students who are not part of minority groups trying to do that and then in terms of the leadership opportunities um, and just more awareness around the community and what's going on in our school and the school system in general um, that was really nice to hear about because I feel like there isn't often a lot of not transparency, but I feel like we often don't hear a lot about what's going on in the school system. So it was nice to have those opportunities to learn and the opportunities to be involved in other things. Yeah, creating that awareness. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to add in that it was really, like for me as an instructor in this space, it was really special to you know, wait, wait around till four o'clock and then have these little squad of students coming in from Windermere. There were students who came all the way from U Hill and came rushing in after they got off the bus. But it to have that, like, you get a sense of what's going on in the district and you, students would share with each other, like the different cultures that are happening at their schools. It felt, it felt like there was buy-in, like the students who came really wanted to be there. And I think there's a lot of courses that you take in your high school career that you know it might not necessarily want to be in the space but imagine everyone in the in the room actively wants to be in the space and is engaged in the learning so as um miss calder was saying earlier it does feel like a university seminar it's like you paid for this thing you want it to, to be successful and um so really encouraging the young people who are considering this course bring a bunch of your friends that it, it makes the learning greater you can continue the conversations at your own schools yeah, it's a great place to uh, to meet others, but also bring bring your friends. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions, but I see Hugh is typing. Hugh, do you want to unmute? No, I was just um, I was typing to say that I 
I really think that the flexibility of this course, um, and I love what you had said earlier, Jelena and Trevor, that it is student centered and that it's because of the the way it's set up, it is centering student voice. And so there, there's a lot of decision making that students can do in this course. And so, and that's part of the equity work that we do as well, right? And so I just want um, everyone to know that at the district level too, when we are talking about the student-led DEI youth conference, the annual youth conference, that's the key word, it's student-led. And so that's all, thank you. Well, I don't see any other questions. So last chance, going once, going twice. Hey, I think we've caught all the questions. I think um, any last words, either Jelena or Trevor? No, just no, really looking just... forward to working with, with uh, <laughs> folks. Sorry, Jelena, go ahead. Oh, same thing, just sign up for the course. You won't regret it. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we will be posting a recording and the slide deck uh, out to uh, school counselors, and it will be posted um, within the VSB. So please, if you have a friend that couldn't make it and wants some information, uh, we'll send those. We'll make sure all the schools have the link so it will be shared out far and wide. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Bye. Bye.